Hey, hey, everyone, it's your boy in the hizzy, and it's classic tabletop RPG Friday, and that means we're getting ready to get back into our brand new series on Classic Traveler. Yeah, last week we started our series, and for those of you who may have missed that, not to worry, the link is down in the description below. Now I need to warn you, now this was a little long in the tooth. I could have broken it up did two videos, but I said, you wanna know something? We might as well just go all in. I mean, we're doing the deep dive anyway, so we might as well go deep. We, we might as well get thorough and we might as well just knock it out and get it out of the way. So there's a couple things you could do since the video's about a little bit over half an hour. So you might wanna go ahead and maybe press save, do a little bit now, then do a little bit later, or you could just put me on in the background. I know some of you guys do that. You kinda of just put me on in the background, go about doing whatever you gotta do. That's cool too. Or also there will be video chapters down below. You can skip to whatever section you want to. The problem with that, however, is that you probably gonna skip over some stuff that you need to see. This is kind of one of those videos where even though I have video chapters for you, it's probably not a good idea to skip because there'll probably be like little details all through it because you guys will see there'll be all these little points that I'll be putting up. You know, it's gonna be up to you how you wanna handle it, y'all. Now, for those of you who are brand new to the channel and you're like, what's up with this dude? Well, my name's Servant of Shiloh, y'all, and this right here, ha, it's RPG Elite. This is a place where I focus on putting the RP back in the RPG, and how I do that is by giving you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture. And on Fridays, when we do these deep dives, it is just one big, long tutorial that goes on for months. Now, I mean, we cap it off with an adventure in the game that we have just covered. This will be something that is good for people who may not wanna go out and buy the game. But let's say you're going through this series and you may change your mind, or you just may say, you know, I really do wanna get that game. Then down in the description below, there's gonna be links for you to go and grab the PDF version or the hardcover of the classic version because it's still out, because it's still that good. Yeah, y'all thought I was playing, didn't you? Nah, brother ain't playing, know what I mean? All right, y'all, so let's get into this. On the other side, I have the question of the vid. Also, I have the update on how we're doing with our recruiting for that mini adventure that I just talked to you about because we've got a couple slots left we are gonna be starting this real soon here, but I'll give you that update on the other side. So let's do this and roll them. All right, folks, here we are, classic traveler. Excited about this, I am, I am. Now, if this is your first time watching any of my classic tabletop RPG series videos, let me just give you the cliff notes on how I do things. I do things in a purest fashion, which means that there are no homebrew rules. There are no modifications or anything like that. What we're going to go is straight from the core books, because maybe either you're brand new to Traveler because and brand new to tabletop RPGs, or maybe you're just brand new to the game, even though you've been in it for a minute and you're curious on how this works. Now, the one thing that is so cool, I think it's cool, <laughs> by the way, but... One thing that happens in character creation is that there is a possibility of dying, which I think is boss. That's some hardcore character creation rules. You know what I mean? I mean, when you can die during character creation, there's just something about that that's like, oh, shoot, this is serious. <laughs> there is a rule, however, that if you got a character, you're rolling good and all of a sudden they don't survive, you can muster out it said that they're injured, but you don't get anything for that term. So you like serve two, two years, I think, and then you're out. So how we're gonna do this is I am going to first roll for my attributes here. You have strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, and social standing. Now I'm gonna roll six times here, but I'm not gonna put them anywhere because we're gonna have to look at one of the major charts when it comes to character creation. So let me first roll 
and see what I get for the six. The seventh one over here that you're probably wondering about, we ain't going to mess with that. Uh, that actually, in Classic Traveler, you don't mess with that unless you add it in later on. Let's go ahead and let's roll for these six. Or let's just, let's just roll six times, see what happens. Also, you roll 2d6 for each attribute. So let's do it. We're going to see what I can roll here and if it's going to be halfway decent. Roll number one. Okay, that looks good. That's that's nice. But can can I keep it going? Ah, uh, see, oh man. Ah, uh, why? Ah, uh, let's go with another one. Let's see. I'm still gonna keep going here. We only got one, so not hopeless yet. Ooh. All right. Liking it. Not bad. Now, I might roll another five or four or something crazy like that. So who knows? But let's see what happens. All right. This one's looking not too bad. Not too bad at all. Seven's average. As a matter of fact, there's seven. You know, they just put seven in here because it's average. So, yeah, get our last roll here. See what we can do. Whoa, you guys, not bad. This character is boss, actually. <laughs> All right. All right, so here we are with the prior service table, and this is where all the magic happens, y'all, just about. Not really, but we'll get to the other tables in a second here as we need to. But let me go ahead and explain a couple of things. So the first one is your enlistment number. This is the number that you need to roll to enlist in one of these six branches. Now, the majority of these are military connected, so the Navy, Marines, Army, and the Scouts be a merchant as well because they are needed and also other which is kind of like civilian professional careers however i i've been looking through this and i think i know what i want to do but let me explain what these are to here so if you have these stats at this level or higher you're going to get a bonus over here so let's say for the navy if I have an intelligence of eight or higher, I get a plus one. And if I have an education of nine or higher, I get a plus two, which means in total, I'll get a plus three. And that will be taken off of the enlistment here. And I would only need a five instead of an eight on 2d6, because all of this is 2d6, by the way. I'm just saying, obviously, the hardest one to enlist into are the Marines. But once you're in, you're in. You don't have to keep enlisting. So after I've looked at all of this, I think I'm going to go with the Navy. Now, I haven't put my stats where I want to put them, and I will here in a second. But let me explain about the draft. Even though I can take this down to five by having the proper stats and the proper level in those stats, there's still a possibility that I will miss that enlistment roll. And if I do, you go to the draft. You roll 1d6 on that, and you will be drafted in one of these other ones. If you put it in for Navy, and then you don't get it, you can't change them around for whatever you get drafted into, you're stuck. All right. But I am going to go for the Navy, by the way. I am. So let me go over here and put the my stats where I want to put them so I can have these and be advantageous and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. Got my stats put in here. Got a five on my strength. So I got a little bit of a penalty, but that's okay because the dude is shooting you in the face. He's got a dexterity of 10. Yeah, that's what. How, that's how he's going to do things. And he's going to try to get in the fisty cuss with folks. Gun to the face. All right, so he's trying to get into the Navy here. Eight plus to get in on 2D6. However, he does have an intelligence of 8 plus and an education of 9 plus. So he's going to get this plus 3 modifier, which means he only needs a 5 or higher. However, 
there's still a possibility he may not get it. That means we go to the draft, and it might be a she. It might be a she. I'm, I'm not sure yet. But we're going to go into the draft if you don't make this five or higher, and you just roll 1d6, and you just take whatever it rolls. That's it. Also, the possibility exists is that you could get into the very same place that you were trying to get into. That can happen. You know, it would just would be good if I didn't have to do that. You know, if I could roll this five or higher, it would be good. Well, let's see what happens, huh? Oh, man. Whoa. Had me scared there. You only have to do enlistment once, so I'm good. No draft. All I have to do is survive. I have an intelligence of seven or higher. That means I'm going to get a plus two, which means I just need a three or higher to survive. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh man. It was a rough first term, right? But he, he eked it out, right? He got some shrapnel in his knee or something, right? But he's still, he's, he's in business. He's still in the Navy. Wow. All right. So now it's time to go on to the commission. Now, this is the hardest out of all of these. Even though I have a social standing of nine or higher and I get this plus one modifier, I still need a nine or higher in order to get this commission as an officer. It's just hard. So let's see what happens. Just going to roll this and just see where the dice rain. Get out of here. You got to be more careful. I got my commission, y'all, and you only need it once. After you get your commission, you're good to go. It's just a promotion. Nice! I got my commission! I don't believe it! I do not believe I just rolled that! Awesome on the first one! This kid must be really good! Alright, so now we got to go and see if we can get a promotion. Again, I got this education of 8 plus. That means I just I need a 7 or higher. Eh, that's still pretty high. But it's eh, a possibility he might not get the promotion on this one, but at least he got pr uh, a commission which means he's going to be at rank one. So let's go ahead and let's roll this. Ah, five, okay. So he doesn't make it, but now let's go and see what other things he has on this first term that we can go to in terms of his skills. So I'm going to go over here and pull this up and I'm going to pull up the skill eligibility here. All right. So it looks like for the initial term of service, he's going to get two. So this is his first term. Per subsequent term of service, you get one upon receiving a commission one and upon receiving a promotion one. So he didn't get the promotion. It's not a subsequent term. So he's going to get three skills. All right. So I'm going to go to the skill table and pull it up, y'all. And let's see what we got here. So you have four different categories of skills. You have your personal development, you have your service skills, your advanced education, and another advanced education table, which means that you have to have an education of A+. Plus. He's going to be eligible to roll on all of these since his education is 10. But it's just the, you know, you just have to choose which one, and then you have to roll 1d6. Oh, shoot. So since he has three rolls here and see over here, gun combat will give me a gun. Uh, I think not for Navy. We'll get to that in a second. But let's uh, I'm going to do personal development service and I'm going to do this last advanced education table. Uh, I changed my mind. I'm going to do this education table. I'm going straight down the line here. For this first term so let's see what i can get for yeah let's see what i can get for the first so we're going personal development here let's see what i roll one get a plus one to strength oh sweet y'all okay so i don't get a i don't get that uh the uh penalty ah sweetness all right that was good so let's go with our service here um, and was that right? A one? Yeah. Plus one of strength. Let's go to service. I think I might have pointed over here, but it was over here, but it's the same thing. Uh, so let's see what I can get over here in the service. Gun combat. Oh, man. It's just, oh, man. I'm hitting all cylinders today. Oh, I'm, I'm having a good time with this one. 
Uh, okay, well, let's see about the weapon since it's gun combat. Now, he can choose just about any of them. A body pistol, he wouldn't have a plus modifier. He would on an auto pistol and anything else. Um, oh, yeah, let's do an auto. I think I'm going to take auto pistol, and I'm just going to note that right now. I'll put everything in there later, but... It is going to be gun combat with an auto pistol. So I'll just write that down and then I'm just going to move on with the advanced education table. And let's roll down here, 1d6, see what I can get. Now, really, what I really want is the back suit, just be honest. But, you know, I'll take whatever I can get. Let's roll here. Engineering. That's a good too. Engineering. Okay, so at a plus one to his strength, he had a gun combat, which automatically you choose what you are good at. Doesn't necessarily mean that you actually have the weapon. It just means that you're good with that weapon. And he chose auto pistol. And he also has engineering. And you all and you just get a one in all of these. If it's a skill, that's a one. If it's something that changes your stats like it did for the strength, then you just add that one and you just go on about your business. All right. So for the first term, not looking too bad, y'all. Not looking too bad. The thing is, can he re-enlist? And now we're going back here and we got to see if he actually re-enlist. <laughs> it's a six plus. You get no modifiers, y'all. It's just straight roll. So, uh might not make it, might just be one term, but he didn't do too bad for a first term, so it is what it is. Let's see if I can get this, y'all. Let's roll. Got it! Woo! By the skin of his teeth, he got it! So we're back in here, so again, you don't go through the draft, you don't enlist, you go straight to survival now. He gets that three plus or higher, so let's see. Wow, he keeps getting close to these numbers here, but he did survive. You don't roll for a commission twice. You just roll to see if you get promoted. You need a seven plus for that. Got it. Yes, he's promoted. And so I'm curious because I don't have the table up, but I'm curious now. So let's go to the uh, where's the table of ranks here. All right, so he is rank two so that means he is a lieutenant man you need to be a captain or an admiral to get oh my gosh ah uh, that probably is not gonna happen <laughs> i don't even know if i'm going to keep him in that long this is the second term oh he's 22 by the way every term is four years so he's 22 on his second term here he did get promoted right so that means that for every subsequent one, we're going to go back. Let me go back to that table. The skill eligibility. So this is a subsequent term. He gets a skill and he receives a promotion. So he's going to get two skills on this one. So let's go. Oops. Let's go back to the skills table. See what we can get here. Okay. What do I want to roll on? Yeah, let's go down here. I am going to roll on the last advanced education. Uh, Shoot, I think I'm going all in, y'all. Let me go some personal development. Yeah, I'm going to do personal development because in the Navy, you're going to get a development in something every time. So, yeah, it's personal development and then the last advanced education one. That's what I'm going to do. So let's do personal development first and see what happens. Oops. Five education. Oh, man. Hitting it on all whole cylinders. And then let's go to this last one here and see what he can get for his advanced education. Engineering again. So he gets an engineering of two. Oh, man. This is a smart kid. Not bad. Not bad. Even if he doesn't make the re-enlistment right now, I'm good with that. I'm good with where he's at. So, speaking of which... I would have liked him to re-enlist, right? So let's go ahead and see if he can re-enlist. Six plus is what we need, y'all. Rosen nine. He's going back in. 
<laughs> Third term, he is going back in. He's 26 years old. Or she. I might make this into a she. You never know. You know, I can change it around, not me. And let's do our survival of three plus. Easy peasy. Let's see if we can get a promotion of seven plus. Oh, yeah. Got them two skills again. Let's go back to that skill table and see what we can get. And, oh, man. I am going to do service skills and uh mm, you know I'm, I'm tempted to do the personal development thing but i think i'm going to go down to the last advanced education again so i'm going to do service skills and advanced education for this one so let me go ahead and roll for the service skill forward observer okay, okay. i'll write that down forward observer and let's go down to the last advanced education table here and see what we can get. Man, engineering again. This dude is an engineering genius. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's got an engineering of three. Wow. All right, time for re-enlistment, y'all. Will he make it? Because he's going to roll. Yeah, I'm going to see if he can make it. Man, he made it once again. Oh, he's in... I think I'm going to do this, too. Yeah, we're going to roll. This is his fourth term. Let's see if we can get through this fourth term here. And promotion time. See if we can get a promotion. It's always pretty hard to get a promotion. You just need a seven plus. You made it, though. Man, I'm... Man. Oh, you are witnessing history. <laughs> uh, I got two more skills that I can add. Right. All right. So let's go. I'm going with personal development and uh, I'm going to go to service skills. So let's do our personal development first. Three plus one to endurance. Nice. And let's go to our service skills and see what we can do. I want to do service skills. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's try. Let's try for. I'm, I'm gonna try. I, I want to try to roll a six to get gun combat. Um, well, you want to know something? Nah, I'm not gonna do that. We're going back down here to advanced education. Let's do advanced education. See what we can roll. Computer. Okay, that's cool. That helps. Okay, so now we're gonna do. Is he gonna try to re-enlist or is he going to just? This is gonna be it. Because he's what? He's, let me see, one, two, three. He's 34 years old. For the sake of this example, he's going to try to re-enlist, but let me pull up the aging table. So here at 34, he's 34 years old right now. If he re-enlists, he's going to have to make these rolls. A plus for his strength, his dexterity, and his endurance, because that stuff is going to start to go down. Do I want to do that? You want to know something, y'all? I think he's good. He's, he's going to muster out right now. He's 34. He's had a good run. He's, what, 16 years? Right? He's had a good run. Let's, let's, let's get him out. Let's muster him out. Let's pull up this mustering out table and see what he gets as he retires out of the Navy. All right, so here is the mustering out table. You got a benefits table up here that you can roll on, and you have a cash table down here that you can roll on once you want to get out of your career to start, you know, going out into the great grand yonder of space. So I also have another one that we need to look at here, which is the mustering out benefits, okay? And he made oh, he made his rank three times. So he's going to get per term of service one. So he automatically gets four. And then he's going to get two because he's ranked three or higher. What is rank three? I wasn't even paying attention to that. What, what is rank three? Uh, that's not it. That's the wrong table. Uh, where's the rank table? 
Uh, table ranks. He's a lieutenant commander. All right. And did he? I don't think he missed the promotion, did he? No, I don't think so. I think he might be rank four. Uh, he might be a commander. Still isn't a captain or an admiral, so he wasn't going to stay in that long, y'all. He's that's okay. <laughs> so even if he's he's ranked three or four, I have to go back and look. Uh, I don't think I, I I don't think I missed the promotion there. So he probably is ranked four, and that means he's going to get two more. So he means he gets six total on the mustering out table, six rolls on the mustering out table. You can choose. From which ones, you know, if you want to, if I want to do three and three, I can do that. If I want to do four and two, I can do that. Um, I think I'm just going to first roll on the benefits and then see what I can get. And I'm just going to kind of play it by ear, depending on what I get for each table here. So let me roll on the benefits table first and see what I can get. Um, now, right here, it says. Uh, characters was ranked five or six they can add one which is why there's a seven here and a seven here he goes here it says no more than three rolls can be made on this table and individuals with gambling can receive a plus one on the table down here he's not going to receive a plus one on any of them so let's just go up here to the benefits see what he can roll now over here you don't see it here because it's but it's in the same order as it was on the prior services table. So this is what you have for the Navy over here. So let's see what he can get. Five. Has a high passage. Those are good, by the way. Okay. That's good. And I'll, I'll go down to the cash table too now this time and see what he can roll. Nice, 50 or 20 grand, Ugh, 20 grand. That six was looking good, wasn't it? Okay, uh, okay, 1,000 credits. Uh, I'm gonna do another roll on the cash table. <laughs> See what happens. Ah, 10,000, eh. All right, let's do another one on the benefits. Plus one to intelligence. Wow. What is going on? Oh my gosh. Genius here. <laughs> oh man. Yikes. Huh. Uh, well, let's go ahead and roll the benefits again. Three. Plus two to education. How in the world are you going to have a 13 on education? What? What? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do our last one on the cash table. Oh, I rolled two. Ah, that one don't count. <laughs> so let me go ahead and take that back. Okay. Let's do it again. Ah, 10K. Uh, it's got a total of 40k on the cash and plus two on the education, plus one on the intelligence, and a high passage. Eh, doesn't get a gun, though. <laughs> it doesn't get a gun. So, you know, man, this is crazy over here. All right. So, I was very happy that this penalty for his strength went away. So, wow, man, this was uh, this was awesome, to be quite honest. This guy is a beast. Do you hear me? I mean, he is a genius engineering a three forward observer. Got a little bit of computer uh, skilled with an auto pistol, even though he doesn't have one. <laughs> he's going to have to get a gun right away. Let's get a gun. And he's good with it, too. Oh, man. Well, that's it. Um. I am going to do one more thing, though. Watch me, y'all. One more thing. We have to know what this cat looks like. So let me go and do my thing. And I'm going to put his picture in there so we know what he looks like. And we're going to give him a name. Right? Let's do it.
All right, so here we are, and yes, I went ahead. I gave the character a name. Her name is Aria Rembrandt, y'all. Here she is, commander in the Navy, mustering out. And she has for herself a auto pistol skill of one. She has computer of one. She has engineering of three and a forward observer of one. Now, check it out. I know that over here, we're talking about the plus one, plus two, and all these modifiers. Okay, this is not ubiquitous. This does not apply to everything that they do with the skill. This is just something that came with this actual character sheet thing. Because in Classic Traveler, let me pull this up for you. So here's the guns and accessories, right? She has auto pistol, and it's a plus one. If she has a 10 or higher, which she does, this is a typo, by the way. Um, so this is actually plus one. So if you actually have Classic Traveler and it has this typo in it, it is plus one. So she gets a plus one if she has auto pistol and she's got a 10. However, if she has, let's go down here and talk about this submachine gun. Well, she gets a plus two. Because she has a nine or higher in her dexterity. So again, this plus one right here is not ubiquitous. So you have to actually change it up as you are playing. Here is another one. So if we go to engineering right here, engineering has a plus two per level of expertise. She has an engineering of three. So that means that she's supposed to have a six. That's only giving her five over here. So actually, if she was going to go to roll, she would have to go down here and put in at least one more for other modifiers in order for her to do her thing. See, that's how that works. And even for forward observer, if we go to the actual description of it, it's plus four per level of skill. This one level that she has actually gives her a modifier of four. So she can go in here and she can put like three more in here and she would have four. So again, these things are not ubiquitous. You have to go through all of the skills and kind of check them out. But my girl is a genius. That There is no doubt about that. She is a genius. She's an engineering genius. Also, went in here, bought a couple things for her. I bought a couple of auto pistols, literally two. I bought two auto pistols for her because this is what I was thinking. Listen, if she's down and things are, are go popping off, right? She doesn't want to spend time just kind of reloading. She just wants to pull and draw and shoot. <laughs> so she'll just do it with two. And then I had her buy some cloth armor. And when it comes to armor, that's another thing, right? Depending on the weapon used against the armor, it will have a modifier to it. So yeah, man, I mean, this is, this is where you start getting down to the meat. It's not hard. Not that hard, folks. Really isn't. It's not. But there she is. She's done. Aria Rembrandt. Now, this is what's going to happen. You will either see her as an NPC if I am the GM for our mini adventure when we get to the end of this series, or you will see her as a PC if I am a player, depending on what happens with the recruitment, which I will talk to you about this on the other side. But folks, Aria Rembrandt is in a hizzy, and yes, God willing, you'll be seeing her again. Suffice to say, I am digging me some Aria Rembrandt. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't care if I have to play her as an NPC or if I have to play her, at, at, I'm gonna play her. I'm gonna play her somewhere. Let's talk about this recruiting thing because we only got a couple slots and I still ha got quite a few emails to go through. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my son just graduated from college. I had to go down to see him in Georgia. Also, my daughter-in-law also got her doctorate. In there, you know, so we're doing all the celebration down there. Went there for a quick minute, had to come back. So number one, this video is a little late. And also, well, I didn't get a chance to get to those emails that you guys sent me, but that doesn't mean that you stop sending the emails. It's like I told you, 
May 31st is the deadline. We will be looking at these and we will be scheduling these interviews soon. So keep sending them in if you are interested. Of course, like I said before in the last video, best way, the first ones who get first dibs are those who are part of the Leet Squad. And if you wanna know how to be part of the Leet Squad, all you have to do is click on the link down below. It's the first one that says Leet Squad sign up and then it will take you to a landing page. That landing page is gonna have a space for you to fill in your email and your name. Do that, hit the blue button, and then you will be part of the lead squad. And if you're already a part of the lead squad and you're just now getting hip on this, then go ahead and hit me up with an email and say, yo, servant, I'm interested in that traveler mini adventure, wherever you doing it. And we're gonna do it in a couple months here, probably in August is when we're going to actually record it. So let me know y'all if you're interested. Well, if you've gotten anything out of this video, you've gotten some value out of the video, maybe it was entertaining, you learned something new, do a brother a solid and crush that like button. Could you please? Also, hey, if you wanna stick around and be part of what we're trying to build here, as far as an RPG Elite community, then you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Be great to have you. Now, let's get to the question of the vid. It's gonna be a simple one, y'all. You saw all of the different careers, right? So you got your Navy, Marines, Army, Scouts, you got your Merchants, and then you've got your other. Tell me, y'all, let a brother know which one of those would you want to be in Traveler? And which one would you kind of gravitate towards the other direction and run from? <laughs> Let's say, yeah, nah, I ain't gonna do that one. That one I ain't gonna do. Let me know both of them down in the comments below. You guys know I read them and well, at least I read them. May not respond to all of them, but I do read them. So let me know, start writing, get them out, start typing, do whatever you gotta do. All right, that's it, I gotta go. So. You know how I do it, right? You know how I do it. I gotta do my snaggle puss. So exit, hey, if you've got a game this weekend, I do. One ring in the hizzy. Then happy gaming, y'all. I hope you have a fantastic RPG Elite session. And also, if you want to see another series, I got another series for you right here. So until next time, God willing, a brother is gonna say, Peace, 5,000 leets, Audi.